this morning, and we like to sing about ourselves in the Salvation Army, all to the glory of God, and um, so this song is definitely a victory song. It reminds us that in Jesus, we have the victory, Amen. and um, I hope that you are in full knowledge about that in your own life, about the victory that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ because of his death because of his resurrection, um, because he has made us alive in him. Amen? Amen. 
All right, so we're going to sing together. And uh, march on, salvation soldiers. March forward to the fight. We don't cower, do we? We know what is ahead of us. We know there are trials and tribulations, but we have victory in Jesus. So, Lydia, I gave you a tambourine next to you. I don't know if this is going to be a good tambourine song, but it's right next to you on the pew. If you're excited about playing it, it's all for you. I think I put it right next to you. So, is it on the other side of you? Okay, okay there we go. Lydia is, is going to have fun with the tambourine. There we go. Here we go. March of salvation, soldiers, march forward to the fight. We dream the stars while you do the book of the book. So keep praying about our kettle effort. Um, keep praying for um, our volunteers, our drivers, our staff, everybody, um, all to the glory of God. Um, we know that's a big endeavor, especially in the midst of COVID, but um, we're just praying his protection and his provision, of course, and we are trusting in him all the way for sure. Um, we do have core council today, but we are going to have that virtually. So, um, core council members, I see lots of you are, are tuning in online. We're going to meet at 1 p.m., and that will be virtually. You got an email. Rebbe, you can call us, and we'll put you on speaker, okay? So you can listen in. We want your, your um, thoughts on that, too. And um, as you can tell... Our numbers in Black Hawk County are quite high with the virus, and so we are just limiting our interactions with each other. We can be socially distant. That doesn't mean that we are spiritually distant, amen, because God is still good, and we are trusting him in spite of all this. So um, we, of course, are, are going to be streaming our service, so please tune in if you are not comfortable coming to church. Please tune in. We're going to be here um, every week. We're still praising Jesus no matter what. Um, but we are not going to be having Sunday school. We definitely feel like meeting together in praise and worship is essential business. It is essential, right? 
Arguably, Sunday school might not be, and, and I'm sorry to say that. Getting in the Word is very important with each other. I understand that, but we're not, for the time being, going to meet for Sunday school or do rides. Our hearts break at that, but we have to be safe. So, so we still will meet for worship every Sunday at 1045, and I will say, um, also just to protect us, we will open the building about 10, 1020 or so, so don't come before 1020, got it? You don't have to come so early. Okay, good deal. We'll go the the What's that? We'll go for the air church in the mm, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. There you go. All right, but we love having you, so please come if you're comfortable doing so. If not, of course, join us online, and um, God can meet with us. That's the wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit is not confined to just this room. This is a very special place, isn't it? Because the Lord has worked mightily in our hearts, but... Um, Praise his name. It's not just in this room that he works and moves. And so um, we're trusting in him for sure. Uh, don't forget, our offering plates are here and in the back. Um, if, you're, if you are online and you still want to give, sawaterloo.org, you can give. Um, lots of great ways to, to do that, and we just praise God. That's a part of our worship, when we give back to the Lord what he has entrusted us with. That's an important part of our worship. So we just want to encourage you um, to do that. So um, it's going to be a great day in the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be together today. We're grateful, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We're grateful, Lord, um, for Jesus and the victory that we have in his name. We pray today, Lord, that everything that is said and done in this place, Lord, whether it's here in this room or outside of this room, Lord, we just pray that um, wherever we are worshiping you today, Lord, that we would bring honor and glory by our offering of praise to you, Lord, that you, God, would be magnified, that you, Jesus, would make your name famous among all, Lord. We love you today. We thank you, God, for your um, your work within us and through us, Lord. We are humbled by that. Continue to be with us in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Um, we, I love this today, we are going to testify before the Lord. And if you've never done this before, um, this is a cool thing that we do in the Salvation Army, and we haven't done it in a while. So um, we're going to sing a beautiful song. I love to tell the story, right? God's Word tells us that we should be ready in season and out of season to tell about the wonders of God. And He is moving and working in us, around us, through us. And I hope that you can see that. And I hope that at any time when someone would come to you and, and ask you what God is doing, that you would be ready to share what he is doing in your life. And so we're going to sing, I love to tell the story, the first verse and the chorus, and then we're going to open it up. If you have something you'd like to testify about, if you would like to praise God for anything, if you would like to tell, if you would love to tell your story today, of what God is doing in your life. We're going to give you some space. And I should say also, for those of you online, we don't want to exclude you from this. So if you have something today that you'd like to testify about, I got my phone. I'm ready to see all your comments. Type it in and um, let us know um, how we can praise the Lord with you. So let's sing together. I love to tell the story.
cured me of two different kinds of cancer. I've had five heart surgeries. He's put me through every one of them. He blessed me with a great wife and a good family and a good country and a good church. And I guess he always with me all the time. Yeah. Right. Amen. Thank you, John. Glory to God. You want to say something, Daniel? Okay. Just a text for uh, 9-11 and our revelation. Wow. So I don't know about the New York City and what the Ocean County, but uh, we all have it, but it, it goes up. We praise his name for protecting you. We praise his name with you. We're just uh, water right now. That's right. You are. We praise God for that. Amen. second verse, you'll have another opportunity. So be thinking about what the Lord is doing in your life and has done in your life and share with us and tell the story. Here we go. I love to tell a story Viola, and it's nice to see you. She says, God is good. He keeps us looking up to the light, to his glory. Amen. And have, and we should have no fear because we will be going to a beautiful place someday. And that's the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, right? Um, 
faith above fear, I keep seeing that. Um, faith over fear, and that's a good reminder for us. Thank you so much for testifying to that today. Amen. Anyone else? Okay. Let's sing this next verse. to thank the Lord for his grace over her love. That is very sweet. Tammy, thank you for that. And we praise God for his grace in your life and in John's life as well. And we praise him for that. I just want to testify today that um, the Lord is good to me more so than I could ever deserve. He is so, so good to me. Um, we have wonderful neighbors and I every fall, I want you to know I'm, I'm always like, I go into fall seeing the leaves fall, and I'm like alright, we're going to get on top of these leaves this year, they're not going to overwhelm us. Every year Martin and I kind of say that to each other and every year it feels like we get blessed with a tree that waits until petals start to lose all its leaves, and then we have no time to clean up our leaves because we are super super busy. And yesterday, I got a text message from our dear neighbors, um, Garen and Brent, and Garen said to me, I know you're so busy, and I would love to come, and with, she has a little writing lawnmower thing, and she's, she loves it, she's on it all the time, and she said, I would love to come in your backyard and take care of your leaves. Now that was a huge blessing to me. My leaves were probably going into her yard, our leaves, so it might have been just a little also selfish that she was annoyed, but regardless, she is the kindest, kindest woman, and we love her and we're grateful for her. So today I praise God for little blessings like Garen and her family who bless us and are really good neighbors. We, she's probably not watching, but I'm still praising the Lord for Garen and Brent and her and their family. And um, we're super thankful that they are a part of our lives. Anybody else before we sing the chorus one more time? Okay, let's sing the chorus. I love to tell the story. I love to tell the story. like those revival days when people would would go to the river and pray and there'd be a mighty movement of the Holy Spirit and all kinds of things would be happening. And so um, we're thinking about that um, this morning and we're going to the Lord in prayer. Um, God is so faithful in hearing our prayers and answering our prayers. And I am reminded of, I'm reminded of, of, of 
chapter in Isaiah where Isaiah is asking, asking the Lord, like, who am I that you would hear me? And, and, and God saying that his ways are greater and his, his ways are higher. His thoughts are greater than ours. And so knowing that we are coming before the Lord who, whose plans and purposes are much greater and higher than anything that we could imagine. We can intercede on behalf of other people, and we can bring those to God who bends his ear to us and hears us and who loves us in his mighty grace, um, cares for us. And, and what a privilege it is to bring our needs before the Lord. And so, of course, um, there are a lot of needs in our hearts, um, and we're gonna we're gonna be thinking about those. Um, so as we as we're gonna sing a, a verse and the chorus, and then we're gonna bring our needs before Him, and, and a little more, so we don't have to do our prayer requests all at one time. We're going little by little, and we do have some online as well. But let's let's just sing this first verse and be thinking about um, something you'd like to pray about today. to go back to those places as like memorial of Lord you've worked here and, and really why we come to church the Lord has worked in this room and we long for his working in our lives once again so um, Pat would like us to pray for Tiffany and Charlotte would like us to keep praying for Harmony House, of course, and all those who are affected by the virus. Can you pray for the elected? Absolutely, and then we will pray for the governor. Yep. Thank you. Ready. I received a recorded message Thursday or Friday stating that there are six cases of corona amongst the staff. Told, he told me when when uh, we we were texting back and forth that they were taking some precautionary measures in specifically to his room as well, like putting some plastic up and things over the door. So I know that they're doing everything that they can to protect him and all the residents there as well. Right. But yes, let's continue to pray. And for Deb, Deb and Ralph as well. Aaron? Um, family. Basically, the grandmother is raising two kids um, because the parents are not in a position to be raising the kids, but the grandmother is having a mental experience with her nanny. Uh, she has become very sick, um, and she's a little bit older, sure. and we're all, you know, not really very worried about these two kids because sure. we know that they're not, that if anything happens,
verse and we'll take more prayer. verse and I love it because the chorus says oh sinners let's go down and um, I'm reminded we all fall short of God's glory and it is our prayer on our journey to holiness on our journey to being more like Christ that this would be our heart that no matter what is going on in our life that we are going to prayer before the Lord that we are taking it to the Lord in prayer, knowing that he is the answer. He is the answer to all of life's difficulties. He is the answer. And so um, we sing this again. Let's go down to the river to pray. As I went down in the river to Jesus, 
Will you say that to him? And may it be so in this life, Lord. We are trusting in that for sure. And Lord, we pray for Deb and and Ralph. And, and Lord, we are grateful for the way you're moving. We thank you, Lord, that they are home. The beautiful picture that I saw last night of all of them. Deb with the dog on her lap and, and Ralph eating food at home. Lord, what a beautiful, beautiful sight. And that is a miracle, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory for that, Lord. We thank you for that. Continue to be with them, God. We pray for Kathy Livingston, and we just ask, Lord, that you would be near to her today, God. Place your hand on her body, Lord. We pray that um, she would recuperate, Lord, and that she would take the time that she needs, Lord. We know that there are two children who are dependent upon her and the security and and comfort, Lord, that she provides for them. So we are just interceding on behalf of Kathy. Of Kathy. We pray for Erica, Lord. We ask, God, that you would work in her body, Lord, um, that the treatments that she's receiving, Lord, for her cancer would just penetrate every part of her body, Lord, just to get rid of, of that cancer. We think of Dorothy and Pam, God, who I've heard from this week and, and are in need of our prayer and, and um, intercession, Lord. Be with them. We pray for those who are in prison. Uh, be near to them today, Lord. We pray for Henry and ask God that you would be near to him and his needs today. And we pray for, for my dad, Lord, that you would be with his appointment this week at the radiologist, Lord. We just ask, Lord, that there would be something else that could be done, Lord, to um, bring about healing in his life. Lord, we trust you with that. So, Father, um, as we are gathered today, Lord, um, we just pray that you would move, Holy Spirit. We pray that, um, God, our life, our hearts would be in tune to yours, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with your speaker, hiding him behind your cross. We love you, and we pray all of this in the matchless name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. I'm going to be reading today from the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Beautiful, beautiful words that Major Martin will be preaching on today. And I'm going to be reading our scripture. This is from the New Living Translation, Revelation 2, verses 1 through 7. And this is a message to the church in Ephesus. And here's what it says. Write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Thank you, Major Shannon. Also, important to note, too, today's Major Shannon's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. 
Should have done that earlier in the announcements. It feels a little weird to read Revelation and say, let's sing happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, title of today's message, When Jesus Comes to Church. Uh, I think we all did. <laughs> I think we're all watching. Hallelujah. I don't know if you, I like movies a lot. There's this point about three-fourths of the way through every movie um, where, like, the, you know the climax is getting ready, right? of the movie, like whatever tragedy was going on, it's like coming up. If it's an action movie, you know, a big, like the ending battle-like scene is coming. If it's a romantic comedy, you know that they're just about to figure out why they can't be in love, you know? <laughs> but if it's a drama, to that moment, you just know it's coming. And, and in many movies, there's this thing that happens where, you know, things are really rough, and it looks like there's no hope, and then usually someone has some kind of, like, monologue or deep-seated, like, conversation, like, we're gonna get through this. First, we're gonna attack the Seville from, you know, the, from this end. We're gonna get through it, and we're gonna, and, like, and there's uh, some kind of, like, thing, um, <laughs> like this rousing part. When things get rough, that people will persevere, that we're gonna make it through. Or maybe, maybe that's more like action movies and stuff. Maybe it doesn't quite qualify for it, but it qualifies for a lot, right? You know what I'm talking about? Like that moment, there's always, there's always this, this speech that people would persevere. And that's the message of Revelation, perseverance. Uh, Major Shannon read in the New Living, um, to, be an, to be an overcomer, to be one who overcomes. In the NIV, it's the one who's victorious. Now, this message lends itself to salvationists who understand that we fight against sin in this world. And I pray that we hear what the Spirit says to the church. Do we hear it? To persevere in Christ Jesus alone. We do that by recognizing the source, by knowing where we've come from, and recognizing that, and then recognizing what's to be done. And this message may be to an entire church at Ephesus, but I think it resonates very well to each one of us. I could have those same points for each one of these churches if I did a series in Revelation, by the way. I could preach the same points every week for at least, like, <laughs> seven weeks, right? <laughs> and it'd be the same message, to hear the Spirit, to persevere in Jesus Christ. There's no mistaking the source in this, for this church, for this chapter. The source. John, you have to, maybe, maybe if you didn't already read chapter one, uh, this beautiful scene, it's like this drama unfolding. The lampstands are there if you read back in chapter one. And suddenly, you know, Christ comes in and his, his hair is blazing white and his eyes are glowing fire. And out of his mouth is that double-edged sword. Sword, and he's here among the lampstands which represent the churches, right? They are in his presence. It's this wonderfully commanding, beautiful scene. And he's, you know, I am the living one, <laughs> right? I'm the Alpha and the Omega. It is Christ. I have come. It's a little different than, you know, when Paul writes a letter to a church saying, like, okay, guys, listen. <laughs> it feels a little different, doesn't it? Even if it's from the same heart. Um, good morning. Hey, Bernadette. Yeah, it's from Ah, thanks, Daniel. Even if it's from the same heart, we understand that Christ is the one speaking to the churches. And I say to us this morning, we have to recognize the source first. Maybe it's because I feel like we hear a lot of things that aren't from God around us all the time. It's easy to get distracted, isn't it? Easy to get distracted. Christ speaks to the churches. But unlike, and I, I just want to say, unlike what everyone um, likes to say about Revelation, he's not coming to bring judgment, because then he wouldn't have had to write a letter, right? But to bring direction and encouragement to people to persevere. That's the source. To bring the knowledge that he himself has persevered over death, over sin. And in his strength, 
so shall we. We have to start at the source. That's why John, in this writing, this uh, book of Revelation, starts with the source. And he starts every letter to each of these churches the same way. Whoever has ears, in verse 7, let them hear what the Spirit says, to persevere in Jesus Christ. And you got to know uh, where you came from. Uh, God knows us. He says that right away. He says, I know your deeds, right? I know, I know. He's talking about the whole church, but I know your deeds. I'm, I'm owning that as a person, right, as I'm reading that. But he says it to the entire, entire church. I know your deeds. And this church had some, apparently had some wicked people stirring up trouble. And apparently they, they dealt with it. Apparently they made it through. Apparently they rooted it out and they sorted it out. Like, this is a compliment, right? This is, this is, you are making it through. You did some things right, just like I wanted for you. That's a compliment. You know, and it comes, maybe we miss it because we always like to think of God and his, this is like, judge, Revelation is judgment. But he's, this is right before his correction. This is the nice thing you say to people before you say the thing to help with, Right? Everyone is like this. You don't go up to a child and say, you're doing that wrong. You'd be like, oh, oh gosh, gosh, I really love the, the drawing you have going there. Is, is, that a, is, is that a unicorn? Wow, that's amazing. I like the red you used. But hey, um, you know what would be a better place to draw on instead of with the Sharpie on the wall? I've got, the, I've got this paper here at the table. We could write there instead. Wouldn't that be great? See, you have to build into that. We laugh when it's about children, but let's be honest. Adults need it too, right? I know I do. I've, I've, <coughs> I've snapped at a couple of fingers this week. Uh, nobody in this room, don't worry. Um, we, need, we need love for, we need to hear that something's going right. We have to recognize the things that we've done well before we're able to hear what we need to do next, don't we? Can we, can we admit that together? All right, you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but I'm admitting that I'm a full-grown adult uh, and I still like to be complimented on things I've done first before anyone tries to correct something about me, right? But we can get that. Um, verse 3 is actually pretty nice, I think. But personally and spiritually, we need to consider what it is to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, which is to know where we've come from. And when I think about that personally, I, I think when we think about where we've come from, what we've already persevered through, what we've overcome, because it's about being an overcomer. This is about being victorious in Christ Jesus. It's, um, we might, if we're thinking about that, we might think of things with pride. Uh, maybe we have a nice checkoff list. For some, maybe, maybe some are filled with pride. But I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess, and we had some testimony time today, that the penitent Christian probably calls to mind the overwhelming graces of God in our life. And where he's brought us before. Which of course should make a difference in right now. And what comes next. Where we've come from and what hardships we've come through. Are the most defining thing about us. When it comes to our personal holiness. If we cannot recognize where we've come from. We cannot recognize what God still has for us to do. If we were an addiction ministry, we would say the same thing. And because we deal with sin, and because we claim victory over sin through Christ Jesus, we still claim the same. It's an old story, but it's still our story when we claim Christ as our Savior. When we see the things of our past, or the things that we've done in the light of God's grace, we're able to hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. 
course, that's what comes next, right? So we recognize the source. We recognize where we come from. And then in verse 4, the hammer drops, right? <laughs> and, uh, and it can kind of shock you because Revelation is about creating these really evocative images because it's serious, right? Holiness is serious business, amen? amen? It is. Perseverance through persecution, that's serious. People are being persecuted that we're reading this letter. And here today, if we're going to fight against sin, we're going to be persecuted. I don't mean just the church or just in public. I mean us personally, each one of us. We're in a fight. And, uh, and Major Shannon read the, the New Living. It said um, that you, uh, it said in verse 4 that, you don't love me the way you used to. I like the NIV that says, you've forsaken the love that you had at first. I, I, find, I find those words like chilling to the bone. You had that love at first, but something happened along the way. You know, and I have no idea what that means for those people, the Ephesians that would have read that letter. I just want to admit that I don't think any philosopher, theologian, or commentator actually knows what that means for them. But I know what I start to think about what it means for me, okay? Um, and I imagine the Ephesians knew what it was about. I imagine it meant something to them as a body of Christ, that their love for each other, maybe their love for the community, but I think, in truth, their love for God in some way had regressed from his perfect love as a church. And that, that correction that happens comes with advice, right? Wonderful. Repent! <laughs> right? It's like you see the old pulpit, like, repent, repent. The same message to the people wandering in the wilderness. Repent. The same message to them years later, struggling with were horrible kings. Repent. The same message John the Baptist called out to people. Repent. It's the same message that the empty tomb still brings to us. Repent. It also comes with a threat, by the way. I don't know if you caught that in the, in the reading. It comes with a threat. If you don't repent, I will remove your lampstand. And I want to tell you in this figurative language, that doesn't mean that uh, Jesus was going to come into their church and take one of their light bulbs out. All right? We, we get, do we understand that that's figurative, right? Um, but that lampstand was from the first chapter, representing them as a church and representing Christ there and Christ being among them. And when he says, I'm going to remove your lampstand, friends, uh, he's saying that you won't be my people anymore. You won't be mine. You will have removed yourself from my presence. This is a really tough thing. And I like to think of it this way. Um, like you won't be mine as a child of God if you just play church instead of living it. And that's how I interpret that. You have to live it. You know, and maybe this is a tangent, but it became all the rage for other people to say anytime another church, and as the churches were growing and, and the word of God was going out, like if another church was doing something funny, they'd be like, they are not a true church of God, right? And they'd write these big letters, you are no longer, you are no longer part of the church. And they'd send, them, send it off with a messenger. And then the other church would get that and they'd read it to the whole congregation. They'd be like, ah, oh, that other church over there. Oh, we'll show them. I want to write a big long letter. You are no longer the real church of God. And then they said, send that to them. You know? I mean, it sounds comical as we say it, but uh, I'm telling you, that's church history. Uh, churches get mad at each other and say, well, you're, you can't be the real church anymore. Uh, whoa, look at all the things that you've done wrong. But probably, uh, probably most of those things aren't really things. I'm going to just throw that out there as a generalization over most things regarding church. I'm not being specific, is that way I don't have to answer specifically for anything. Isn't that great? Oh, good job, Major Martin, for not being specific. Um, 
But, <laughs> but it's funny, actually that still happens today. Oh, we're a real, we're a real New Testament church. Oh, not like that one down the street. Oh man, no, 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 uh, we, we, we do things the way they used to. Uh, so so we're, <laughs> we're better. It's, it's funny, but we have to consider, and I want us to think about this, that somewhere along the line, people forget step one, right? The source. Christ is, ta Christ is talking that he will do that, right? He's not, <laughs> even, in this, even in this, like, hey, you've been taking care of business in the first couple verses, um, that's not an indictment of, like, you should always be, like, Kicking people to the curb. Um, it's that when it comes to how you are in Christ, I will be the one that removed that pet stand, right? And I think that's a personal message for us to. It's personal for us to be people of the living God. Now, I don't want you to mishear me. Major Martin, is Christ saying to us that we're in danger of losing our salvation today? I was probably not saying, I remember he's talking to a whole, this is up to a whole church, but if you have to ask that question, or it fills you with some kind of weird fear, you know, like something's, something's gone wrong, then I think maybe we need to be reminded of the source, Christ Jesus. And we need to be reminded of what it means to follow him. We need to be reminded of what it means to be called a child of God. And we need to be reminded that he is with us. He's going to, be, going to be born pretty soon, right? Another month. <laughs> Emmanuel, God with us. And that he gives the power over sin and death. And we have to claim that power. He's telling us here to persevere. Hear what the Spirit says. And he gives the right to eat from the tree of life. We've been going through, I know we're not having Bible study anymore, but going back through Genesis and the significance, the separation that happened, right, from the garden, the significance of what that meant. And for Christ here to say, be an overcomer. I have made a way for that separation to be no more. And in our heart, <laughs> like the lampstands are lit right here. Aren't they? Do we hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches? Or do we hear the message to persevere in Jesus Christ? He gives the right. This new Eden. He's talking about living now. People often misread Revelation and think that it's all about heaven, it's all about judgment. But I'm telling you, this message was written to people to persevere in the here and now, are you persevering? Are you persevering in the love and strength of God to be an overcomer? Can you hear what the Spirit is saying to you? Have you forsaken the love that you had at first? Maybe when you first tasted salvation and forgiveness was so sweet and your love was so big, is it still on fire? Repent. If it's not, then the God of all grace uh, will welcome you, will strengthen you, and give you the strength that you didn't have before to be an overcomer, to be victorious, and to persevere. I want to sing um, one of my favorite old songs in the 70s that, uh, well, I guess it's the 80s when I learned it, that I sang in the car uh, with my brothers and sisters, and my mom taught it to us. She made us all sing in four-part harmony because she was like that. Um, it's very simple. No piano, we don't, we don't need anything here. And I just wonder today if you need to decide that, um, I don't know, that maybe you've lost some of the love that you had at first. Maybe you haven't been listening to the Spirit. Maybe you've been listening to everything else and you've forgotten the source and the rock-solidness of Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you're afraid that you won't be able to persevere. Can we just decide today as we're singing this song to pray and give that back? I mean, there's no river down here to pray, but there's an altar, so you can do that if you'd like. There's other people around us. We can socially distance and pray with each other. If you're online, you can pray too. Um, but this song is so simple. Let's seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now there's other parts to that. But I say to us this morning, let's seek the kingdom of God. Let us seek not to lose the love. Let us seek if Christ really walks in the door. It's, I mean, I'm already feeling the spirit right here. But in case we need to see him physically come through the door, you know, with the, the blazing mouth, let, can we just be sure that we will probably bow and sing hallelujah and pray that we are seeking him first. Hallelujah. Let's sing uh, the second verse. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Major Shane is going to bring the benediction. Lord God, thank you for today, for being together in your presence. We just pray, Lord, that we would seek you, seek you first, Lord, with all of our hearts. We pray, Lord, that as your word reminds us, when we 